Hello and welcome dear scale modelers to my small hobby YouTube channel. My name is Tomo and today we are outside. Today's video is a little bit different as you can see I'm outside and why? Well because I hate being inside when it's so beautiful like it is today. Sorry about the sun. And I hope you can hear me well. Anyway, I'm here at the tri-border of Slovenia, Austria, and right down there, there's Italy. See? So, basically I'm everywhere at once. Now, today's topic is 48 scale. Okay, so 48 scale is kind of a very odd scale, because it's very popular among airplane builders, but not so much for the guys who are building armor. And then we have the 35th scale, which is very popular among armor builders, but not very popular with airplanes due to the fact that, well, there are just not any planes in 35th scale. Now mind you, there are uh, airplanes in 32nd scale, which are huge, and there are planes in 48th scale, which are smaller, and there are planes in 72nd scale, which are teeny little tiny planes. But 48th and 35th, are kind of a uh, well they're different so what happens if you want to build a diorama for instance a 35th diorama of an airfield well you're shit out of luck because there are no 35th scale airplanes you can put trucks and figures and all the all the cool stuff but no planes i mean yeah sure you could um potentially build it in 72nd scale but those again are very small i believe that that is why manufacturers start producing 48 scale models which are kind of a hybrid and a link between too big and too small. So what is a scale actually? A scale is basically a measurement of how big or small certain objects are in relation to its real life counterpart. So a 70 second scale model is 70 times smaller than its real life counterpart. The bigger the number, the smaller the object. The smaller the number, the bigger the object. Now I don't claim to be a professional scale model builder because you know, I build for fun and I still have so many things to learn but I do know that manufacturers should do a little bit of a better job at being consistent with their production. I don't know what drives them to make certain scales more popular than others. Maybe it's supply, maybe it's demand, I don't know. But it seems to be very funny that certain scales are just more popular. Now I know maybe that the smaller scale objects uh, in like 70 second scale are more popular amongst um, many is because they are smaller and you can fit a lot of the models in your cupboard or display case simply because they don't take a lot of space and sometimes it is necessary to build or manufacture certain models in a smaller scale now let's take for instance the Antonov airplane that I reviewed a couple of weeks ago that is a 144 scale model if you would attempt to make this model in 172nd scale that would be almost twice as big and it's already a huge ass airplane. So scales are important. But what is also important is that you give the builder or the consumer or scale modeler or whatever, the ability to have a full range of items and not being just limited by a scale. So as I've mentioned, 48 scale models are a hybrid or a bridge between one and the other, the extreme small and the extreme big. And although they're not as popular as 35th scale models, because they're of course smaller, they give you the flexibility and ability to, to really make a very cool diorama. And it's not limiting you to a certain scale. And so you are able to do a lot more. The benefit of 48th scale for armor is of course that it doesn't take up as much space as 35th scale. And although you might lose some detail due to the smaller size I think they're still very comparable and that is why in today's video I planned to show you some 48 scale models of armor trucks tanks and you know cool wagon that I think are very cool so without me going on too much let us jump into the boxes and see the models well hello there munchkins and behold the 48 scale kingdom of certain models let us just look inside the boxes, shall we? I think 
that it's good if we start with something very simple and easy to review and that is this little um, Kubelwagen Type 82 in 48 scale. Africa Corps with a beefy little balloon tires. So let's open the box up. Right, so all the sprues come in a ginormous bag. Well, small bag anyway. And uh, we have like two sprues and clear parts and some stickers. Well, actually decals, but you know, I digress. Anyway, uh, this is the base of the Kubelwagen. Although it's small, 48 scale is small. Uh, we do have substantial detail present, as you can see from the video. Uh, we have the beefy tires here. It's pretty nicely laid out. The plastic is really uh, very thick, thick and uh, sturdy. Uh, it's, it's a little bit flexible on the sides, as you can see, but it's um, I think it's a pretty good, good plastic. Like all Tamiya kits, it's absolutely immaculate in detail. No flashing, no stubs, no like um, crooked things and seams and such. And then we have, of course, the second one, which has the two dudes inside. One is standing and one is sitting. Uh, you have a little bit of a thing going on on the sides here because you have to kind of scrape it off but it's really not that big of a deal really. The legs aren't going to be seen, at least on this guy. This standing guy should be a little bit more um, taken care of by the modeler that is building it but overall the detail is just fantastic. You have just a little bit of a motor on the bottom if you choose to paint it and then of course you have some arms and legs and heads um, yeah, so the last one is a little clear sprue which has just a little uh, windshield and as well some decals with some license plates on front and back and then the emblems for the doors. Next we're gonna take a look at some um, Russian uh, trucks, uh, actually just a truck. We have some dudes on the back and a driver uh, with, with just one headlight, <laughs> you know, war, war as hell. And uh, this one comes in this little packagey thing. I'll take the sprues out of the bags. And through the magic of editing, all the bags just disappear. So we got some sprues. This one has a little bit more than the other one. As you can see, we have some gray sprues for the dudes and some olive drab uh, parts for the car or the truck. And we have a little clear part, which is basically just, well, we can take a look at this first. So we have just a little bit of a front windshield and the light. It's a little textured light, cool, nothing special, let's move on. Okay, so the main body of the car comes in two sprues, olive drab is the name of the game. We have the radial grille, the side engine covers, the uh, firewall with the, you know, for front assembly, I guess, the where the window goes, the hood or the bonnet. Then we have the drive train on the bottom, wait, why doesn't focus, come on, man. Okay, my fingers. Okay, come on, focus. Yes, yay! And some exhausts. We have some stubs on the bot on the ends, but those are just like nothing. It can be just cut off. We have the gear shift. The tires have nice little threads, at least on the sides, and even on the bottom side, you can see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the 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 kind of the bad thing about these kind of models is they're stationary, of course, but you know the the plastic is not. It's, it's hollow, right? And if for some reason somebody would want to look under the truck, yeah, you know, that kind of bothers me a little bit. But, you know, it is what it is. So we got some stuff here. We got a little dude in front with seats in the front of the car with a head, with his head here, the torso and the bottom portion and two arms, which is kind of funny. And we have the second uh, truck sprue with the, with had a bed, with the truck bed on the bottom. It has a nice little texture of wood. You can see the grains in the light here. And then the sides, pretty nice seats. You even have the little fabric distortion. That's really cool. I, I really, that's a really good level of detail. Um, and we have some canopy. No canopy, this is not a canopy, sorry. This is a tarp. I still don't know what the heck this is called. It's, you know, the cover that covers the truck. And then, of course, the bottom of the truck with some leaf springs here. And, of course, the mount of the first headlight. So, yeah, that's the truck done. And we take a look at some dudes and some equipment. 
Um, well, mainly there's just, you know, gear, like shuffles and ammunition and, you know, like uh, guns and stuff and some helmets, satchels, bags, pretty cool. I don't really know what this is supposed to be, all oh, these oval things, but, you know, that's what the, mail, the manual's for. And then we got a machine gun and some round things, which again, I don't know. I think this is like for the machine gun, like, uh, you know, you put it on the wheels and then move it forward. It's like for, from the sec from the from the First World War type of weaponry. That's at least what I think it is. And then we have two smaller sprues, which contain basically just the dudes. Carnage, carnage on all sides. The plastic, it's just like on the first one. It's quality plastic. It's shiny plastic. It's very... It's hard. It feels hard and solid. It's not like whimsy and crappy. And the level of detail on the dudes, let's just zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about, is just phenomenal. See the little knees and the uniform and the creases and the arms. There's a little bit of fraying on the edges, but this is just, this is not nothing. This is cosmetic. This is nothing at all. Okay, we got some arms for for the guy who is kind of hugging the sides of the car so yeah basically this is just groovy stuff british it's only fitting that we show the british car this is a british truck uh, support one a light utility car 10 horsepower wow really powerful uh, this one is a little bit unique and you'll see just in a minute what i'm talking about let's open the box So the sprue count on this one is much less uh, substantial and, uh, than the uh, Russian one, but we have the whole shell of the body here. It's like very convenient for me to have this little, come on man, focus. Okay, see, a little stub here that you can kind of hold it and show it to you. Uh, yeah, it's basically the whole truck in one hand. It's so tiny, look at that, so cute. Uh, full of little small details, which is just fantastic. Beautiful casting. Then we have the rest of the truck, which is in one ginormous poo. Um, yeah, the wheels again, very nicely detailed. We have the bag, the front, the fenders, the dude that sits in the front. The dashboard on this one, you can actually see. I don't think we have, we had the dashboard on the other one. It wasn't really paying attention that much. But you have leaf spring suspension here as well. well I guess in that area, all the leaf spring cars were there, like, you know. Least spring was the name of the game and then some shovels and some gear shift knobs and wheel and stuff okay so that's the one so the really interesting part is this little sprue which is the clear part sprue so the first thing we have the little window in the front with wipers already on there and we have this little thingy that actually plops inside the cop cabin and they're like the back window no, actually not the back window, but just the side windows uh, and then we have the back. See, it's really interesting that why they chose to do this the way they did. So I'm guessing one of the explanations would be that, um, well, you could paint the whole thing in like camouflage pattern and just cover the whole truck. But you can also probably use half transparent and half, you know, painted so you could put some dudes inside the car, maybe, or some, you know, cargo that you would like to display. So that would be kind of neat. The option is there, so yay. Okay, we have some decals with this one. Um, I hope you hope you can see them. I didn't take them out of the bags because I didn't want to do any substantial damage. I'll put some fingerprints on them. But look at that, Poland, holy moly. Is this like an allied truck, Polish allied truck? And then we have some other stuff and some stars and Royal Air Force. Woohoo! So nice little decals. Now this beauty, this German beauty, is really what I was hoping to show. Um, Cause I really like this little um, Kettenkraftrad. Kettenkraftrad. God, my German is crap. Anyway, it's a collaboration with ICM. I think that the dudes are from the ICM kit and the motor thingy is uh, Tamiya. So let's open. Oh, by the way, this is actually uh, a very new release from Tamiya. Um, I think it's been out for like three months, I think, something like that. Um, and it's pretty cool. So let's open it up. So the dudes, 
right? So this is the sprue that contains the dudes and the guard house and some miscellaneous items. I think this is the ICM part. Why do I think that? Because all the little um, bags that Tamiya puts together are like pinned together with clamps, with little plastic clamps so in these wiggly bags and they're like, you know, clamped together with these things. But this sprue was in this bigger, thicker bag that usually ICM uses, which is glued on one side. So I'm probably guessing this is just an ICM. But anyway, it doesn't matter who made it. It's gorgeous. It is absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. We get the post, we get the drums, uh, the drums, the, yeah, the drums. Are the drums? Well, oil barrels, Jesus. All right, so we got the oil bar barrels. My tongue is twisting. And we got the little house thingy. Uh, there's a, uh, oh, look at that. That's kind of neat. So we got the grooves here, and then we got the grooves on the other side as well, but we have some pin marks, which is kind of annoying, but it's an inside job, so it's okay. Then we got the legs, which are, the figures are just gorgeous. Okay, Tamiya, we have some barrels, we have some cans, we have some other stuff, and uh, yeah, sacks, nests, satchels, cool stuff, nice. If you ever saw any um, their scale models, uh, figures, or their miscellaneous items, you'll get this inside, so it's pretty cool. And then, of course, this thing, yay! The motor thingy, K cat and whatever crab. Anyway, but this one is small, it's cute. Pretty versatile, look at that. Little seat here. Pretty good detail on all sides. It's just phenomenal. 48 scale, rules. Deutschland, Deutschland. Okay, we have the Horsch Type 1A, German vehicle for transporting dudes. And this one has the vehicle and so I think it has dudes as well. So let's open this baby up. Magic of editing in play again. Okay, so this is the base of the car as, as well as for all the sides. Um, cool, cool, very, this plastic is a little bit thin, but it's still quality plastic. It's not crappy, as you see. I'll put you closer to the magic. All the little fine details. I mean, the car doesn't have a ton of detail, but it, it it's there. It's there. Look at that. The vents on the hood, like, like how it's supposed to be. You see the roof that's supposed to be like collapsible roof. And then we have the shovels and what's this? An antenna thingy? Some axes. I don't know what this is. Gear shift knob thing. And the wheel. And the grill. And the bottom. Pretty good stuff. Exhaust. Okay, moving along. Oh yeah, we do have dudes. Look at that. We have a sprue of dudes. See, told ya. Some dudes just sitting around, you know, minding your business. These dudes are a little more simplified than the usual. They just, you know, just glued together some arms and legs and then you're basically done, which is, again, a very cool thing. You don't have to mess around too much if you don't want to. Let me just put you closer to see a little German dudes. Look at that handsome beast. Look at that. Say hi to the mommy. They might actually all be the same when faces. Well, no, they're not. They just, they look different. Tamiya made an effort. Ooh, look at that. Cool, okay. And we have some more dudes. Well, actually one dude here. Little head missing. Then we have some wheels and more guns and some seats, some springs. It's a pretty neat little thingy. Look at that. It'll put you very close so you can see the action. Okay, and then we have the last crew, which is basically the same as the first one. And another dude. So we have like two well, driver and uh, passenger driver. And little headlight covers. Cool. And the clear parts. The clear parts we have, you know, the, the basics. And then we have some decals. This is being a German, of course, it has to have decals, Germans. Have to know, have to have them. So we have some decals here. 
I'm sorry you guys I didn't take this out but you know they're basically just license plates and some I think these are speedometers yeah probably speedometer so that's basically it okay so the Sherman the Sherman tank look at that America's finest um, M4 Sherman so early production yay 48 scale let's open it up okay one neat feature of this tank is that the tub is metallic Yes, you heard me right. The tub for this Sherman tank is metallic and it comes in this little separate box It's pretty heavy. It's like one of those uh, matchbox cars, right? Um, it's a nice little metallic tub. You don't believe me? Look at that Here it's metallic, which is cool. I think it just gives a little weight to the tank So it doesn't just fly off the shelf every time you bump into it. So that's a good one then we have, of course, the two sp um, sprues that contain the tracks and the wheels, which are the same, identical. So the tracks are fixed. Uh, they're not movable, of course. I uh, got the bottom portion, and then some upper, and then the drive, the drive sprocket, the drive sprocket, and the drivetrain. Uh, okay, Andy knows this better than me. The, than me. And some guide wheels, and then the suspension arms and suspension. That's suspension, yeah. And then we have some other little small pieces of track here. And we have two of these. And then we have, of course, the main business of the tank, the, the top portion, which is for the 48 scale model, it's pretty nicely detailed. I must say it's groovy. Then we have some other bits and bobs that go on it. And then we have, of course, the cupola with the main barrel gun, which is a little bit, you know, look at that. There's a little seam line on the edge, which you have to kind of attend to, but it's not at the end of the world, I guess. So this is the front, yeah, this is the front. Yeah, it's pretty nice, pretty nice. And we also have some poly caps for your convenience. And we have also some screws because you have to screw the base onto the thing. So I guess you're just gonna screw this on. Yeah, see, look at that. You get the two stubs and get screws, and the screws go in. So you kind of assemble it together. You don't even have to glue it, which is actually very interesting. Interesting in design. Okay, so what else do we have here? Water slide decals, of course, and we only just have Americans have very simple digits of like the white star, and that's basically it. None of the fancy graphics that the British have or Germans. This is just a nice water slide white star, and of course, the assembly instructions, which is basically just the same thing that you already seen in others. But let me just show you this one as well since this is the last model. So the whole assembly goes together like so and we got dry wheels, the tub, the chains and we got the cupola oh look at that the poly caps actually uh, actuate the gun turret oh that's nice cool Right, paint schemes. Okay, that's it. Thank you so much for watching and see you again next time. Oh yeah, back to the studio. Bye bye. An evil wizard has trapped me in this diorama. Why don't you subscribe to my channel and let me deuce. I want to thank you so very much for watching. If you have been, thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing. And I'll see you again soon next time. Bye bye.